In this video, I'll show you how to animate literally any typeface in After Effects with a write-on effect. The most popular tutorials for writing on text give you methods which are quick, but to be blunt, are lazy. These both contain errors which are clearly visible in the videos. I teach motion design, so I can't help marking people's homework. I'd give these both a C-. Great if you're in a hurry and don't care about attention to detail. In this video, I'll show you four different methods, which combined will mean you can literally animate any typeface and do it properly. Okay, let's get started. The font type I think works best with this method is cursive. You've probably already got some cursive fonts installed on your computer. You can do a search for script in your character panel, look up cursive on Adobe fonts, or just browse cursive fonts on the interweb. I used Harlow for no better reason than it was my hometown as a kid. In a new composition, create a text layer which you'll trace over. Select the pen tool, and in the options panel, alt click to turn off the fill, and make sure you have a colored stroke. Then trace over your type. It doesn't necessarily have to be a type layer either. You can trace over an image. The layer underneath is just a guide anyway. To make it easier, you can drag in guides from your composition panel and make sure Snap to Guides is checked in your view options. Once you've traced your first letter, add trim past that shape layer group and keyframe the end value from 0 to 100. Then easy ease and adjust the timings in the graph editor. Once you've done that for all your letters, you can adjust the speed and then stagger the timing of the letters in your timeline panel by sliding the layers. You can then add extra animations such as the swirling around here before it makes the D shape. You can do that by adding vertex points to your path shape and refining until you've got something you like. You can then resolve off this extra part of the letter by keyframing the start of the trim path. To create the color tip effect, duplicate all your animated layers and then move them to the bottom of the timeline stack. Then for those layers, adjust the timing of the animation in the graph editor so they animate on faster. I've expression controlled the stroke width and the colors here. To create the bubblegum look of the text, I made a copy of the master text animation, but with a thinner stroke, called it highlight and offset it a bit. I then added a fake floor shadow by keyframing some paths on a simple shape layer. Let's look at create shapes from text and animating path shapes. For letters made up of straight horizontals and verticals, this is probably the easiest way. Create a new text layer, center it, and then right click and select create, then create shapes from text. This gives you a new shape layer for the letter and automatically turns off the type layer. Then split the shape layer's mask path up into the parts you'll need to animate and keyframe those path shapes. Be careful that there isn't a gap between the different letter parts after you've split them up. And also, even though you should be able to scale up shape layers beyond 100% scale without any loss of quality, I find it's good practice to work in comps which are larger than you'll need, as you'll never know if you'll need to reuse the assets in another project. This comp is 1080 by 1080. And voila. The S is a bit trickier. You might think you could just trace the font and animate to trim paths. But most sans serif fonts vary in width. And with a heavy weight like this, this method just won't work. So a more basic brute force method is to mask it on with the mask tool. We're still going to use the trim paths, but that will be a timing guide. Also, I'm animating it over a longer duration than I'll need, as we'll time remap it when we're done. Using the pen tool, draw a mask, then keyframe the mask path at key intervals, adding mask points along the way as you need to. I set the mask to none while I'm working so I can see what I'm doing. The comment duration is 10 seconds, and I'm just matching the position of the mask to wherever the trim path is at that point. When done, you can either retime it by selecting the last keyframe and alt dragging them all together, or a better way is to drop your comp into another comp and rename it, then apply timer mapping. The benefit of this is that it's easier to ease the timing of the keyframes. The trim paths method, which didn't work for the S, works fine for the U. 
And then it's just a case of making sure the guide path layer covers the letter, then using it as an alpha mode. The remaining letters can be done using a mixture of all techniques. Copying and pasting, then tweaking path shapes from one letter comp into another to save time where necessary. So here, because the R is essentially the same as the P, except with this part here, I can reuse the animation I've already created for the P character. Just remember to make sure the different parts of the characters overlap so there's no gaps. You can do this by adjusting the path slightly. Once all the letters are animated, we can tweak the timing by adjusting or applying time remapping. I've reduced the duration to just over a second. Then I'm using the value graph to ease the beginning and end keyframes. Lastly, I'm offsetting each letter in time so there's some overlap. To create the outline stroke effect, we can drop the main text comp into a new comp and then apply simple choker. Give that a value of minus five then duplicate that layer, give that a value of five, then set the layer above to be alpha inverted mats. We'll rename that comp super outline and rename our main comp super on. Next, to have our text animate off, we can drag the super on comp into a new comp and name that super on off. Within that comp, we can duplicate the layer and apply a simple choker again, value of minus one, then use that top layer as an alpha inverted mat. Drag the top layer along the timeline to have it animate off the layer below. Then replace the main comps in our super outline comps by selecting them and alt dragging the super on off comp onto them. Finally, we can add our animated type to our final composition, which has a text layer in place as a guide. And adjust the timing as we'd like it, so it loops. We start with our text in After Effects. Right click on the text layer and select Create, Create Masks or Shape from Text. Either's fine. Then think about how you want the text to animate on as if you're drawing it physically with a pen. I selected create masks from text, so I've got a solid with masks. Duplicate your solid layer so you have one for each letter, then rename those layers so you know what letter each one refers to. Then delete the masks you don't need on each layer. The masks are named, which makes this process pretty straightforward. The benefit of now having masks rather than a type layer is that you can simplify the font if you like by altering the mask paths. This makes animating it easier and gives you more control over the look. Here I'm using the selection tool to drag over the mask vertex points in the comp window and either delete or move them. Then adjust the bezier handles. It may also be necessary to add to the mask. So here I need to show the pen moving from the M to the O so I'm extending the mask to show that pen stroke. Then use the pen tool to trace what will be the first pen stroke by creating a new shape layer on top. Which you can then animate using trim paths. You will end up with an animated stroke that will need to be thick enough to cover the character. I've renamed stroke layer Matt M. Then use that layer as a mat for your letter by dragging it above your layer, then selecting Track Mat, Alpha Mat. But as you can see here, it reveals parts of the letter that we don't want to see until our imaginary pen moves further along, so it's necessary to split the letter up into separate parts as I've done here. As you can see, I've got four separate layers for the M alone, so now that we've split the letters up into parts, I'm going to show you two ways to animate them on. First, you can add a set mat effect to the first part of your letter, and in the take mat from layer dropdown, select the animated stroke mat. In this case, it's mat M. And then check it animates on. That's fine, so we can copy and paste that set mat effect to the other letter parts. But you might still run into the same problem we had before we split the letter up, where parts of the letter are revealed before we want them to be. It'll all depend on the font that you're working with. 
So another method is to remove the set matte effect from all your layers and instead duplicate the matte layer. Then select in track matte, alpha matte on all your latter parts. Then for any bits that don't work, you can adjust the start point on the stroke trim. You'll find that the parts of the letter which need split in often coincide with eased keyframes, where the imaginary pen is going from the bottom of a letter part to the top and resting briefly before it carries on. Therefore, the start point of the trim for that letter will be the same as the value of the keyframe for the end point. In this case here, for the last part of the M, I've copied and pasted the value of the end keyframe, which is broadly but not exactly 57%, hence copying and pasting rather than typing it in. And that's what you'll need to do as you go from letter to letter. Tweak and add paths and adjust the match you're using so it looks right. As you can see here, I've chosen not to join certain letters, such as the O and the T. You can make your animation as elaborate or simple as you choose within the aesthetic limits of the font. Okay, next we're going to add some interest by giving our text a multicolor effect. Drop your type animation comp onto the new comp icon in the project panel, which will create a comp with the same settings. I'm naming mine Motion Multicolored. And then Control D in your timeline to create duplicates of your type animation pre comp. Add a fill to all of the layers apart from the top one with different colors, then stagger the layers in your timeline. Start by drawing over your text with the pen tool. So you create a line which traces over it. Be conscious of how you want the characters to draw on and join up, and make sure you don't have any layers selected so this stroke creates a new shape layer. It doesn't need to be exact straight away, as you can tweak it later. You don't need the font. Obviously, respect any restrictions on usage. But since your text will be entirely on shape layers, or even just one shape layer, you could simply trace an illustration, or be making a vector version of a shitty quality image the client has supplied. Once you've sketched the overall shape of the text, finesse the path shape. For bits where the stroke width varies, just aim for the middle. Next, we'll create a new shape layer, which will serve essentially as a pen tip, and we'll copy and paste the path shape we just drew onto the position of our pen tip. If we drop the opacity of our guide text, we can see we've now got a circular pen tip which appears to draw over the text. It's janky as hell right now, and we need to refine it, but it's a start. We'll need to time the pen strokes. We've got roving keyframes here, so in this case that means the timing is only affected by adjusting the first and last linear keyframes. But we want the pen movements to slow down and stop at certain key points, such as here when we get halfway through drawing the E. To do that, I find the easiest way is to click on that particular vertex point in the comp window then right click and uncheck Rove Across Time. This will give you an easy ease keyframe and you can start to refine the timing in the graph editor like this. But you could always just make this whole thing animate over say 30 seconds, longer than you need, then time remap it later on. It's up to you, just bear in mind that you will need to make the timing realistic at some point. Since there's usually more than one way to do things in After Effects, I'll show you another method for tracing the text. Pull up your motion sketch window, then make sure the background box is checked. Press Start Capture, and then you just draw over the text. If your capture speed is set to 100, it'll record your movement in real time, so the output is timed to how long it took you to trace over the text. I've applied it to a null, but you can apply motion sketch to anything in your timeline. And we've now got position keyframes. You might end up with far too many keyframes to comfortably tweak, but you can use the smoother to reduce them. So whichever method you use, once you've tweaked the path of your pen tip, you'll end up here. We have a dot moving over the text. To make it seem like it's drawing, we need to add the echo effect, which you'll need to apply to all the shape layers which are drawing your text. I use these settings, but feel free to tweak depending on how quickly your text is animating on. So that gives us an animated pen stroke without all the faff of masking and matting we'd need to do if we used a stroke with trim paths. Next you'll want to animate the scale of your pen tip, and this bit very much depends on what font you're animating. You don't have to have a circle. If you're animating a fountain pen, you might use something like this. I quickly knock this up using some fractal noise as a mat and dropping the opacity of the pen tip. But with a bit of tweak and a keyframing, you can certainly match the different ink densities you see here. Or you can add rough edges to the circle to create something that looks like graffiti. 
But anyway, back to our cursive text. With a bit of time and patience, with your scale and position keyframe in time in, you'll eventually end up with something like, okay, maybe a bit more patience. Something like this. And if you're not sure how to add stroke and shadow, just shout in the comments or download the project file. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.